Hey, what's happening, everybody? Brent Dax here from Syracuse.com. We're live on the Syracuse Orange Basketball Facebook page, coming off the heels of Syracuse's first loss of the 2018-19 season. It comes just three games into the season to the UConn Huskies at Madison Square Garden. Final score at MSG, UConn 83, Syracuse 76. So, hey, thanks for hanging with us here tonight. I would appreciate if you hit like and share, let people know that we're here chatting live. If you are watching us live, we do post a replay up to YouTube later on if you uh, prefer to watch it later. It goes up on Syracuse.com and on the Syracuse Orange YouTube page if you want to subscribe to that and make sure you see these videos in case you can't see them live. It's all presented by Krause Health. And a couple of things for Syracuse tonight really sunk their battleship. One is Jim Beheim just sat at the podium. They got rocked inside. No defense on the interior. And as we'll go over here, another player kind of joins the club of who the heck is that guy that beat Syracuse. The other big thing is UConn shot really well from three-point range. Syracuse's defense, nowhere near as intense, nowhere near on the shooters, nowhere near as effective as it was certainly all of last year. And even in the first two games of this season, UConn hits 12 three-pointers on the night. And the Huskies roll, and Dan Hurley, who takes over as the head coach there at the Huskies just a few games into the season, has a signature win, beating a ranked Syracuse team that may knock them out of the polls. We'll see how Syracuse does tomorrow. So as a result of losing tonight, Syracuse will play at 430 tomorrow afternoon at Madison Square Garden. Uh, we're talking live. We don't know the result of the second game as we speak here. So Syracuse is going to play the loser of Iowa and Oregon at Madison Square Garden uh, Friday afternoon at 4.30 for the next matchup. Then kind of a downer, right, for the first game of the big orange weekend in New York, two SU hoops games at Madison Square Garden, and it all leads to the big football game between Syracuse and Notre Dame, 2.30 on Saturday. It's kind of weird right now to say, hey, at least we got the football team because it's usually the other way around. But I think people are really anticipating that matchup more, especially now that Syracuse lost to UConn and they kind of play – in the, uh, you know, the, the it's like when you watch those old game shows and you got a copy of the home game and you're a supply of turtle wax. You know, Syracuse plays in the, uh, the first game tomorrow and, you know, just kind of needs to salvage a win at this point. So we mentioned some of the big things that UConn did in this game. Syracuse did not get a good offensive performance again. They shot 26 of 66. That's 39%. They shot 6 of 22 from three-point range. So the Orange this year really struggling to shoot the three. Coming into this game, they were 6 of 33 overall. So now they are uh, 12 of, what, 55, if my math is correct there, shooting from three-point range. Elijah Hughes, who did make some uh, threes in this game, the only Syracuse player really to hit from distance was 3 of 8. But he was 5 of 14 overall. O'Shea Brissett really struggling tonight, goes 3 of 15 from the field. Certainly didn't rebound as much as you need O'Shea Brissett to rebound as well. Just five boards on the night. And the other of the big three is Tyus Battle, who went 7 of 17. He came on late, made some plays in the second half to spark this game for Syracuse, but struggled again in the first half, which he's done pretty much all season so far. Syracuse really getting nothing from Barama Sidibe. Or Pascal Chukwu. Chukwu with just six points coming off a 14-point night. Barama, uh, only just a point, you know, barely even played in this game. Buddy Beheim, uh, didn't, you know, got in and out, didn't start, was kind of in the mix here and there. Uh, just a point tonight. I don't know if you caught this, by the way. I'm sure you did if you watched the broadcast. How the heck do they misspell Buddy Beheim's name? Of all the names to misspell on a jersey, you misspell the kid of the coach that's been there since 1962. That is embarrassing. Syracuse has done this before, as we know. Remember the Roosevelt Bowie thing? Uh, Steve Ishmael in football, his jersey was misspelled recently. I mean, that is flat-out embarrassing. I mean, right there, you deserve to lose. If you can't spell Bayheim's name right, I mean, you don't have one jersey with that kid's name spelled correctly that he can run out on the court with. That night, just absolutely embarrassing for Syracuse. It took a much longer for the Orange to get to Madison Square Garden than usual tonight. What should have been about a 20-minute bus ride turned into a 90-minute bus ride. As it's snowing in New York City. As it's snowing here in central New York. Many of you, if you're watching in the Northeast, it's uh, currently uh, snowing, getting that first uh, you know, early, not even winter, late fall uh, nor'easter, if you will. 
So Syracuse got to Madison Square Garden late and just got off on the wrong foot. They looked lethargic early in the game. UConn under Dan Hurley. Hurley is a guy who has brought a lot of energy into that UConn program. He is known for his pressure defenses and getting on his teams. I'll tell you what, he is going to quickly uh, make Buzz Williams uh, – second on the list of annoying coaches who are on the court. They're storming up and down the sideline. Every time the camera pans by, you're saying, why is this guy getting the technical foul? He is going to take that title from Buzz Williams real quick. But you know what? He put some real energy into this UConn team, and they took advantage. They really took advantage. The big thing that really surprised me was Cobb. Cobb came in averaging four points a game, kind of a, you know, a guy you didn't really have to worry about. Well, he has 13 points and 13 rebounds joining a long list of players who have taken advantage of Syracuse, and you're like, who the heck is that guy? But UConn overall, a balanced effort. They had five players in double figures, moved the ball much better than Syracuse. They had 22 assists on the night, Syracuse with just 10. And, you know, there's a name that we didn't mention yet that I should, and I wanted to spend a little time on it. So, you know, we'll certainly, you know, get to it here. I'll uh, respond to some of your comments coming up here shortly. Jalen Carey really got out of jail tonight. Jalen Carey, the freshman who's got to carry the load at point guard with Frank Howard continuing to be injured. Jim Beheim saying after the game tonight that, you know, he didn't practice. He's not going to play tomorrow. Doesn't know when he's going to come back. Continues to be very vague about the severity of Frank Howard's injury. So Jalen Carey goes home to New York City playing at Madison Square Garden, and he could not start the game worse. He had four straight turnovers before, like, you could even take the first sip of your cold beverage watching this game. But he recovered. He had 26 points on the night, which led the Orange. Uh, let's see. He also led Syracuse in rebounding with seven. He had three steals. Uh, he didn't have any assists tonight, which you'd like to see your point guard get some assists. But he grew up in a hurry, and he's going to have to continue to do that for Syracuse. If Frank Howard's you know, status continues to be you know, kind of the shoulder shrug that it's been so far. So Kerry just needed reps. He was a little banged up in the preseason as well. And as he gets more comfortable, Syracuse looks like it's got itself a point guard there. That kid can get to the rim. He's very athletic. He's quick. I think he just needs time and needs reps. And I think he's going to be a very exciting player for Syracuse. There were over 60 NBA scouts at Madison Square Garden tonight. And I think a lot of those scouts are saying, you know, when this kid plays a little bit and rounds off the edges, that's somebody that we're going to keep an eye on. So shout out to Jalen Carey, really uh, the best player on the court for Syracuse by far. Like we said, Ty's battle made some plays late in the game. Elijah Hughes made some plays late in the game. That's the amazing thing. Syracuse played very poorly in this game. They got out-muscled inside. UConn hit a bunch of threes, but UConn also turned the ball over a bunch, and Syracuse kept getting to the free throw line. And that really kept them alive in this game. But Every time Syracuse got close, they even cut it to 70 to 66 late in the game with a Tyus Battle three pointer, which originally was ruled a two, and then they reviewed it and they made it a three. But UConn just kept answering with threes and plays, and every time, and that energy that they played with, you know, Syracuse could take a cue from that because they did not play with that energy that you would need. You would think, being that this was their weekend, it's Madison Square Garden, it's a friendly crowd. But if you look at Syracuse at Madison Square Garden in the last five years, it is not as friendly a building as you would think. And now somebody can check my math on this, but I'm pretty sure they lost more than they've won at Madison Square Garden in recent years. So certainly not the uh, home away from home Syracuse fans are used to it being. All right, let's see what you guys are saying in the comments here. Uh, Brian, noting that Kerry had zero assists in this game. He did, but I think you've really got to give Kerry credit for how he grew up, overcame the adversity, found a way. Howard Washington didn't play in this game, so I kind of wonder if he's more hurt than Syracuse is leading on, and they're really being careful about him coming back from an ACL injury. But it's you got to ride, carry, or die at this point because Tyus Battle can't play the point. That is clear as day that he cannot run the point in, in you know extended periods of time. And Kerry's a freshman. You don't want to put too much pressure on him, but – Syracuse doesn't have a choice right now. But you know what? This is not all on Frank Howard. You can't just say, we don't have a point guard, and, you know, that's it. No, you got to find ways to move the ball, to overcome that, to get Tyus, Elijah, and O'Shea to the basket, which they couldn't do. You know, O'Shea's going to have bad games. He averaged a double-double last year. He had more good games than bad. He's going to struggle at times. But when all three of what you think your big three are going to be, and that's battle – Hughes and Brissett in terms of scoring are down. You need somebody to step up, which Jalen Carey did. 
but there's just no – what UConn lacked in kind of a style they made up for in hustle. And if Syracuse would just match that intensity out there, you'll get those plays. You'll get those breaks to the basket. There was a ton of turnovers that they didn't cash in tonight. So, yes, Frank Howard not being in is a factor. I haven't gone through all the comments here, but I'm sure a few of you noted that. But you can't just keep saying, well, sorry, we don't have a point guard. What you do have is talent and depth, and you find a way to overcome that. You can't just say Frank Howard's the glue that holds this thing all together, and we can't do anything if he's not on the court. You know, what do they say in football? Next man up you got to find a way through it. And this is a Syracuse team that last year found a way through all the injuries and the adversity that they had. Now, to be fair, Frank Howard was on the court for 38 minutes a game in that time frame. But that is notable. It is, it is a valid thing to point at and say Syracuse is not, you know, whole without him. But you can't just keep leaning on that excuse either. And, you know, again, Jalen Carey, I think, really stepped up uh, and overcame an awful, awful – it was looking like a horrendous night for him. But, uh, you know, for the fact he only finished with, uh, what, six turnovers in this game? Let me double check myself in the box score here. Yeah, just six turnovers when he was on pace for like 14 <laughs> as this game started. Good on him, and he recovered on that. Uh, Richard noting that Syracuse, uh, that uh, Ty's battle for Syracuse needs to be a little more aggressive on offense. He's relying way too much on his jump shot. When he attacks the rim and takes those high percentage shots, it's got to be an inside-out thing. I think he's just way too honed in on shooting the ball, and that percentage just hasn't been there so far. So I think Tyus has to stick with his instincts, be a guard, get inside shots, pump fake, get inside, and then work your way outside when those things open up. Uh, Austin asking, Brent, do you think with the way three-pointers have taken over the game that the zone will soon be outdated? Well, the zone works on the three-point shot if you get out on the shooters and you pressure them and you make them take bad shots. It was amazing that UConn was hitting from New Jersey. Adams took one shot that was not only like from NBA range, it was about four steps back from NBA range. So you, again, you can't just throw up your hands and say, well, what are we going to do? They're hitting from deep. No, you got to run up those defenders play with some energy and play with that spark that the zone usually has. When the, czar, when the zone, pardon me, is active and moving and getting out on shooters, it's still effective. I don't think it's outdated at all. It's all about, you know, the effort you put into it, and Syracuse just didn't have that tonight, which, again, is surprising to me. Maybe they were affected by the getting there late and things were kind of thrown out of sorts tonight, but that's your building. You had – certainly there was UConn fans there, but you had a – a big Syracuse crowd there, as you always do. It's your weekend in New York City. And they came out really, really flat tonight. Just, uh, you know, disappointing uh, from that standpoint. Uh, Javen saying, do we play on ESPN tomorrow? Uh, ESPN 2? Yep, that game will be on ESPN 2. 4.30 start against either Iowa or Oregon, whoever loses the second game tonight. Uh, Michael Antonio saying, the game reminds me of the DePaul game when Torch Syracuse from deep ball game. You're talking about that 108-69 DePaul game. This one wasn't quite as bad as that, thankfully. Syracuse actually made a run in this game late on. But this is what can happen with the zone. It's what can happen with Syracuse. And, you know, uh, the question posed a minute ago about if the zone's outdated. The zone is certainly not outdated when it's run effectively, when it's run with effort. And what you hear, that's why Syracuse has so much success in the NCAA tournament. When you face these teams that just don't know how to handle it. Even in uh, ACC play, teams that know how to attack the zone and play it, if they can't get in a rhythm shooting the ball, they get frustrated, and Syracuse, you know, in theory kind of gets the possessions going the other way. Even though the zone wasn't working as much as it should, I mentioned uh, I don't have points off turnovers right in front of me in this box score that I have, but you look at the turnovers, with the rate that Jalen Carey was turning the ball over, and Syracuse only ends up with 11, and UConn ends up with 20 turnovers on the night. I don't think Syracuse cashed in that stat enough. Like we said, they kind of lived at the free throw line a little bit, going 18 of 25 there. UConn went 15 of 23 from three-point range, but we know it did it. They banged inside with Cobb. They hit those three-point shots, and Syracuse just could not match with their big offensive players really struggling in this game. Chris saying there's no chemistry right now. Chuku hit the deck at one point, and everyone walked away. Nobody ran over to help him up. That's a great point. Uh, they're still kind of getting used to each other, developing that chemistry. There's a lot of talent on this team. Whether or not they have chemistry, togetherness, 
you know, you look at last year's Sweet 16 run, a lot of that was predicated on that team's back was pushed up against the wall. They only had six players, and they really bonded over that, found a way in. They were the last team in the tournament and then took advantage of being there. It's very early in the season. They don't have their general out there, their point guard and Frank Howard. But there's no organization on offense right now. Nobody would really, like, try and take over or figure out how things were going really until Jalen Carey eventually did that. So that could be the encouraging thing from this game. Maybe Jalen Carey knows, look, i got to run the show. I'm the point guard. I know I'm a freshman, but I know I can do this. And Tyus is better off the ball. O'Shea is better in certain situations. Buddy is certainly not ready to come in and take command of this team. They can't even spell his name right right now. And Buddy has to shoot the ball. Buddy is out there to be a shooter. And he it, – it, it's, exhibition play is what it is, right? But he had such a smooth shot and a lot of confidence and was getting that open look. And now – when he's out there, he's really struggling off the ball to get open and find that. I think once he gets a shot going, what's, I, what I like about Elijah Hughes, and actually Elijah Hughes did shoot the ball pretty well tonight, like we mentioned. Three of eight from three-point range was actually, you know, everybody else want to combine three of 14, but Hughes is confident shooting the ball. The one thing I didn't like tonight, I think these players really get tempted to shoot the ball from way too deep when they're playing on these NBA courts because that line is there and you kind of want to test yourself as a shooter. I think Hughes needed to step up, use the college line, and shoot from there. What I liked about Hughes, though, was he he has confidence. You, he's got that shooter's confidence. He wants the ball, and he'll do it. And I think as he continues to kind of get in the rhythm, figure out his role in this offense, he'll get some open shots, and he'll start hitting those open shots. But for now, Syracuse is really struggling to hit that three-point shot for sure. Tom noting that Carey came of age tonight, didn't start well, but finished strong. Couldn't say it better myself, Tom. I was really impressed with that because he was looking like he was going to have an awful game, and I felt bad for him because he's a New York City kid. And you know all these New York City kids dream of playing at Madison Square Garden, and when you're recruited by Syracuse, that's something you can pitch these kids. You know, Adrian Autry talked about it. Alan Griffin, both assistant coaches on this team now how they both not only wanted to play for Syracuse, but knew they'd play at Madison Square Garden a lot. Now, they, of course, were in the Big East era and could play in the Big East tournament. But even these kids now, you know you're going to play once a year in New York, be it Madison Square Garden, when the ACC tournament rolls around at the Barclays Center. You know you're going to get to play at home and play in the Big Apple. And they want to play at MSG whenever possible. So I, I was happy for that kid that he – came around off a tough night, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. You know, you got to turn around and play right away. Sometimes the best thing to do after a bad game is forget practice, forget watching tape, forget just get out there and play again. And Syracuse will at least have that opportunity tomorrow. How motivated will they be is the question, because now you're playing in the loser's bracket at 430 against either Iowa or Oregon. I should check that score while we're uh, yakking about it here. This is live, so I don't want to reference too many things that are live because this does go up on YouTube and everything. But for those of you watching now, uh, Iowa's up on Oregon 24 to 16. So we'll see if Syracuse ends up playing Oregon or Iowa tomorrow. If they play Oregon, if you've got the game on now while you're chatting with me or we'll watch it eventually, Oregon's got Manute Bull's kid. Remember Manute Bull? Seven foot, what was he? Seven six, seven foot seven. Manute Bull back in the day, old school NBA. His son, Bull Bull plays for Oregon. And if Syracuse got pushed around tonight inside and couldn't contain Cobb and Pascal and Barama just were shoved out of the way, what are they going to do against that kid tomorrow? If it is Oregon, we'll see how that game rounds out tomorrow. Thanks to you guys for uh, popping in the score there. Appreciate that. Uh, I would rather see Syracuse play Oregon either way. I was hoping it would be in a winner's bracket, but I'd, I'd like to see that matchup. It's early on. This is a bad loss tonight, but, you know, long-term, big picture. I've seen Syracuse in Final Four projections. I've seen Oregon in Final Four projections. I've seen a bunch that have them together in the Final Four. So I'd like to see that matchup tomorrow one way or the other. So root for Iowa to win this game. I'd rather see that at MSG tomorrow than a Syracuse play Iowa. But we'll see what they get there. So bottom line, the Orange have to collapse the zone. They've got to hit more shots. They've got to get the offense rolling here. They've got to find some organization. Again, I, I'll be fair. They don't have Frank Howard out there, but Jalen Carey showed that he can kind of lead the way tonight. When they get their general back, things will, will kind of, you know, fall into place, but there's enough talent. Tyus Battle's a veteran. 
O'Shea Brissett is a talented player that knows how to set up a shot, get to the basket, and score. They can't keep using Frank Howard out as an excuse. So we'll see how they respond tomorrow at Madison Square Garden and then the big football game on Saturday. So we got a busy stretch here of games, of coverage. Uh, please read my recap on Syracuse.com tomorrow. Read all the great coverage from Mike Waters and Donna Totota and Chris Carlson, Dennis Nett with the, gay for with the great uh, photography. We'll be back tomorrow night right here on the Syracuse Orange Facebook page via Syracuse.com uh, after Syracuse and whoever they play. So it's a 4.30 tip time. We usually come on here right after Jim Beheim's press conference. So kind of about a 7 o'clock uh, show right here tomorrow, and then I'll be right back here, but over on the football page, the Syracuse Orange football Facebook page after the Orange play Notre Dame on Saturday. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Thanks to Krause Health for presenting all of this here. Again, please read my recap tomorrow morning, and we'll be right back here after the Orange play tomorrow afternoon at Madison Square Garden. For now, uh, if you're in certain parts of the country, save your strength to shovel a little bit in the morning, and we'll talk to you again Friday after Syracuse plays at Madison Square Garden once again. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight here on Facebook Live.